The SEO summit has finally ended. Over the last two days, a lot has happened in Samarkand. So here are some of the key takeaways from the summit. First is a crucial Modi and Putin bilateral. It took place at the sidelines of the SEO summit. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi told Russian President Vladimir Putin that now is not a time for war. New Delhi and Moscow have long-standing ties dating back to the Cold War. So far, Russia remains India's biggest arms supplier. But in their first face-to-face -face meeting since the Ukraine invasion, Prime Minister Modi stressed the importance of democracy and diplomacy and dialogue. diplomacy और डायलॉग ये सारी बातें ऐसी हैं कि जो दुनिया को एक स्पर्श करती हैं आने वाले दिनों में शांति के रास्ते पर हम कैसे बढ़ सके उसके विषय में जरूर आज हमें चर्चा करने का मौका मिलेगा Meanwhile, Putin says he is in no hurry to finish Ukraine military campaign however he added that he understood India's concerns over the war I know your position on the conflict in Ukraine and I know your concerns which you are always expressing. We will do everything to end this war as soon as possible. The Indian Prime Minister also talked about economy and made a push for transit rights. He said India will emerge as the fastest growing major economy. प्रगति कर रहे हैं भारत का युवा और प्रतिभाशाली वर्कफोर्स को मैं स्वाभाविक रूप से कॉम्पिटिटिव बनाता है इस वर्ष भारत की अर्थव्यवस्था में 77.5 प्रतिशत वृद्धि की आशा है जो विश्व की बड़ी इकोनॉमीज में सबसे अधिक होगी On the other hand, the push for transit rights was a message for Islamabad. Prime Minister Modi said that it took many months for India to get transit rights to send supplies to Afghanistan via Pakistan, adding that better connectivity was required for development. Mahamari and Ukraine ke sankat se global supply chains mein kai baadhae utpan na hui, jiske karan pura vishwa अभूतपूर्व ऊर्जा एवं खाद्य संकट का सामना कर रहा है एसीओ को हमारे क्षेत्र में विश्वस्त रेजिलियंट और डाइवर्सिफाइड सप्लाई चेन विकसित करने के लिए प्रयत्न करने चाहिए इसके लिए बेहतर कनेक्टिविटी की आवश्यकता तो होगी ही साथ ही यह भी महत्वपूर्ण होगा कि हम सभी but the Modi Putin bilateral wasn't the only crucial bilateral of the summit. The focus was also on a meeting between Xi Jinping and Putin. Putin thanked the Chinese leader for his balanced position on Ukraine, but also understood Beijing's questions and concerns over the conflict. The Russian president explicitly backed China over Taiwan, saying that Moscow firmly adheres to the one China policy. Instead, he condemned the United States' provocations in the Taiwan Strait. Attempts to create a unipolar world have recently acquired an absolutely ugly form and are completely unacceptable. There was a lot of buzz about a potential Modi Xi meeting since the 2020 Galwan clashes ties have nosedived between the two Asian giants. So the summit naturally provided an occasion for reconciliation. Both sides did not confirm any meeting, but a week before the summit, New Delhi and Beijing announced disengagement at Gogra Hot Springs, PP15. However, the two leaders did not end up meeting at the SEO summit. However, China and Russia congratulated India for taking over the SCO presidency. India will host the SCO summit Next year, Chinese President Xi Jinping even said he would support India in organizing the summit. But the summit wasn't all business. On a lighter note, the Russian president wished Prime Minister Modi 
birthday wishes or happy birthday. Listen. I also know that tomorrow, my dear friend, you are about to celebrate your birthday. As per the Russian tradition, we never offer congratulations in advance, so I cannot do that right now. But I would like you to know that we know about that, and we wish you all the best. We wish all the best to the friendly Indian nation, and we wish prosperity to India under your leadership. Let's now talk about the just concluded forum and joining us for that is we on correspondent Anas Malik live from Samarkand and live from Moscow is Russian affairs expert Fred Weir. Welcome to the program both of you. Anas Malik, I'll begin with you. This was equally important for Pakistan, Prime Minister uh, Shebas Sharif, although Pakistan's role in the SEO has been questioned. Do you think there was much to gain for Pakistan in the just concluded summit? Well, yes, uh, you rightly mentioned that uh, it was much anticipated, much hyped and much talked about this meeting, particularly of uh, President Putin with Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif Eric. Uh, but what we know and what we understand is that uh, the onus lied on both the parties to let this, let this meeting be materialized into something concrete. The offer has been extended by Russia as per reports with regards to the supply of gas. Uh, whether or not Pakistan takes it or it bulges down under the pressure. That is something that remains to be seen and that's a question that only time can tell as time passes by. But the other component is that uh, the meeting with President Putin and uh, uh, Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif, uh, we saw cautious optimism by uh, Prime Minister Putin, uh, President Putin, pardon me or that, uh, uh, and uh, the mention of Afghanistan as well in talks with uh, Shehbaz Sharif, then giving that slightly personal touch say, by giving the reference of uh, Nawaz Sharif, his meeting uh, with the, uh, the current premier's uh, brother, the former premier who ha also happens to be the former premier. That is something that basically underlines the fact that uh, President Putin understands that uh, his na narrative or his, uh, his moves have put a lot of countries at the risk uh, of perhaps taking a back seat. And that is the reason we're seeing this cautious optimism being put at play. Eric? Live from Samarkand, our correspondent Anas Malik, thank you very much. Fred Weir, what's your view on the just concluded SEO summit? Did China and Russia achieve their objectives? And do you think it was a success, especially for President Putin? And still talking about Putin, do you think he will heed to Modi's advice that this is not a time for war? Well, I think it's quite remarkable. <clears throat> SEO um, has grown up in the past couple of decades. Um, it is the only large regional organization that doesn't contain the United States or any of its allies. Um, it's quite a different kind of power center, and its architecture is different as well uh, from American-led ones. Um, <clears throat> it also seems to contain now about half of the world's population. So uh, the fact that Putin was there front and center and Russia is one of the founding and, and leading members of, of that grouping. Yeah, I think Putin can be pleased with this outcome uh, because he is shown not to be isolated um, as the West wishes him to be. Did, um, did China and Russia get uh, stronger uh, at this? It's, it's hard to gauge because, um, like India... China and, and many other members of the SCO, uh, they are not pleased with the Ukraine war. Uh, it's, it, it's bad for business. Um, and uh, China and India, I think, see that very clearly that, you know, they, they run the risk of intensifying American sanctions as they uh, step up their dealings with Russia. So um, I think that's the message that they're giving to him. Um, I don't think he's going to uh, take that to heart. I mean, yes, he, he wants to placate these incredibly important partners, um, but uh, I think Russia is just getting started mm -hmm. in its war with Ukraine. 
Well, live from Moscow, I've been talking to Fred Weir. He is a Russian affairs expert. Fred, as always, thank you very much for giving us time and for talking to We On today. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.